What do you do when you're struggling with the feeling that you made the whole thing up, that it really wasn't that bad? When you have left a toxic relationship or you're thinking about leaving a toxic relationship and you're going back and forth because you're stuck in cognitive dissonance, you love with your heart, you know with your mind, or some combination of that, right, that makes it feel almost impossible to see truth, to see clearly. You feel like you're stuck in, in, in position and can't move and you feel like maybe you're making more out of it than is really there. When you say things to yourself like narcissist is a buzzword, right? Or is it really toxic? Am I just making a big deal out of something? Is it me? Did this really happen? Are you stuck there? Have you been there? Talk to me in the comments if you have. Let me know what you're going through. Let me know how I can help you or any questions that you have about this. Getting unstuck from this and seeing truth and seeing the reality of situations really does free up your life and it really does help you to heal from these types of relationships. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you recover from toxic relationships. So this feeling of, is it really that bad? Was it really that bad? It's sort of a normalization of the toxic things that happen. It's a desensitization that happens. It's totally normal, especially if you have been in toxic relationships a long time or have had repeated toxic relationships or were raised by toxic people, toxic parents, right? So if this is a normalization thing for you and this is you're just totally desensitized to the things that go on because guess what? You can cope with it. You have the survival skills. You're pretty strong and you can take accountability for the parts that are yours. And so you can just live with this and keep on going. Then in that case, you can see why that would feel like, well, was it really that bad? If you were to take someone who had never experienced a toxic relationship and didn't know people could be this horrible and put them in the same situation, they would see the truth because they would be shocked by how they're being treated. It's unfortunate, but, but a lot of us are desensitized, especially when we come into relationships later in life or, or have been in one in a long time, right? And we're just used to it. The other thing is, is this invalidation. It's a traumatic invalidation of the issues. The, the narcissistic person or a toxic person will invalidate any issue that you have, any anything that you're seeing as toxic in them, and they will minimize and devalue and create a situation where you feel like you're just exaggerating, you're too sensitive, you're too something because you're being told that and you're being fed that information. It's not true, okay? People should not be toxic in relationships. It is them that is supposed to be taking accountability for their behavior, just like you do for yours. Also this denial mechanism that happens. It's part of the whole thing, it's part of not wanting to see what's right in front of you because you're afraid, because maybe it's worse elsewhere, because maybe being alone is worse, because what if, right? The unknown, the fear, whatever it is for you that's creating the denial, that's something to look at so that you can move past it and you can move through it and come out the other side and look back and say, whoa, that was pretty darn toxic. When you have traumatic experiences, when you have these sort of manipulations and toxic things happening to you from other people, there's something that happens where we have traumatic blocking. We disassociate from the thing that's happening and from the trauma itself and can cope through that disassociation. That isn't something that's easy to turn off, especially if it's a mechanism that you've learned to do and a coping skill that you have from childhood. We have to learn to feel the impact of how bad it is when we're treated badly in order to step away from it sometimes. And that's really hard, especially when your disassociative abilities and your ability to just step out while the bad thing's happening, right, is really strong it's very difficult and it makes it hard to witness truth. Other people are probably also invalidating the experience if you've told them. They'll say that's, especially if you've had a covert narcissist in your life. If you have a covert narcissist in any way in your life, a parent, uh, a friend, a partner, whatever, and 
other people see them as a good person and other people see them as someone who tries really hard, is pretty good at talking to people or, or all of that. And they don't see the toxic things that happen because they're so uh, covert and sneaky and tricky the way they get in there with their toxic jabs and their expectations and, and all of the things we know that covert narcissists do. When nobody else sees it, somebody saying to you something like, yeah, your mom means well, can be the most invalidating thing you've ever experienced, right? And you're like, means well for who? For herself? But you can't say that because that other person doesn't see her that way. That can be something that keeps it so that you feel conflicted because everyone else sees it one way and you see it another way. Who does it look like the common denominator is? You. But that's not true. What you need to do sometimes is speak to people who've been there, speak in that is part of what the group coaching is for you guys. That is part of what why I created it is to have a place where people can go safely and talk about this stuff and receive the validation from one another and get some coaching help at the same time so that there's progress to move forward in your life. I mean, what we're really talking about here is the cognitive dissonance that happened, holding two opposing views at the same time. The feeling of, oh my gosh, but that's my mom, I love her, and that is the most toxic woman I've ever seen in my life, at the same time conflicting your brain doesn't know what to do with it your body freezes in 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 the face of it your emotions go in both directions at the same time and you don't know which way to look and what to think a lot of the problem in the fact that we can't see what's happening can't see how bad it is can't experience how bad it is is what i said in the very beginning is the normalization of it it makes it so that that's your normal life and anything else you wouldn't know what is healthy, right, because of this.